Hey guys. So, um, I've been playing with a new social media tool. Some of you probably heard of it, maybe a few of you haven't. It's called Periscope. Um, Periscope is a fun little tool that you can have on your phone that is designed specifically for phones, both Droid and uh, iPhone. Um, probably not Microsoft's phone, Windows phone, because, well, nobody cares. But, anyways, um, Periscope gives you the opportunity to share life live through video. It's basically like a live stream news desk that you carry in the palm of your hand. All right. So, I tell you that because that's what I've been playing with, and there's a point to that inside this story. This week, I um, two things have happened. One, I have been living life as a pseudo-bachelor, which is very, very strange. My wife has been in another country on a mission trip, um, so I've been all alone here, aside from the cat, but as a cat. Anyways. Um, so that happened. Also what's happened uh, this week, part of the reason I wasn't with my wife is because I have been back in school. Uh, the district that I am employed with as a teacher has basically this academy that you can be a part of where they have all these different courses, kind of like summer school for about a week, that teachers can take to learn more about uh, managing their classroom, education techniques. Uh, my case, it was uh, writing lesson plans for our new curriculum this year for social studies. Um, so a bunch of different things. One of the classes that I took this week was an hour class. It wasn't very long and it was entitled, are we failing boys? Uh, and it was just, it really was a class exactly what the title sounds like. It was a class about this idea that we are not necessarily engaging in the proper education techniques for boys in school. Okay. Now, I say that, but I also say this. I don't believe necessarily everything we do in the education system is wrong. I don't necessarily think that everything that we don't do inside of a school pertaining to boys is the reason that they're failing and the statistics of their graduation rates are dropping. I don't believe that's the case. Uh, I don't have the information to back it up, but I can tell you that I also don't believe that how we instruct our students determines the fact of how high a percentage of them are on medication like Ritalin at such a young age because they're too hyper. A lot of you know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, what was interesting inside this class was there was probably nine of us, I think, nine teachers inside that class. Out of nine teachers, there was one male. That was me. <laughs> Everybody else the female teachers. So we had some very interesting conversations uh, pertaining to exactly what it is about are boys failing? Why are we failing boys? Is that really the case? And towards the end of the conversation, what really struck me was the fact that um, several of us came to the agreement that it's not necessarily on the education system for why boys are struggling so much. Sure, we could give them a percentage, maybe, but it's not nearly as high as the fact that, frankly, we're failing our boys because we've already failed our men. Bear with me. This is not some. Um, uh, this is not some political cause. This is not some anti-feminism rant. It is none of those things. You have my word. I promise. Okay. Um. We talked about the fact that thinking about millennials. So that's my age group primarily. A lot of our guys still live in their parents' basement. A lot of our guys spend the majority of time playing video games and bragging about it. A lot of our guys still party like they're stuck in college. In fact, that's really the general synopsis as a whole is our guys, my group, my generation. It's like we're stuck in the past already and we're not that old. <laughs> and there are, I think really there, there are two types of guys in this group. I think there is one group of guys where they've got it together, they're trying to learn, and they're trying to grow, and they're, they're, they're becoming men. Just straight up, that's it. And then you've got another group that has decided to, hmm, screen came on, <laughs> has decided to just stay calm and stay chill, live life, don't worry about much. The problem I have is what kind of example is that setting for future generations? As a teacher, um, I'm looking at classes that are full of boys this year. And I'm thinking to myself, how many of them have been given the opportunity to see a good male role model? 
when was the last time that we have seen a man's man? Pause. Computer issues. When was the last time that we saw a man's man? When was the last time that we saw a man who put in work and effort? Not because they wanted to get ahead in life, not because they wanted all the money, but because they knew that was their objective. They knew it was their goal to ensure that the people around them were taken care of. I think um, quite, quite frequently, especially this week after some conversations I had, uh, to, to my stepfather, uh, he worked in a factory um, for over 30 years making hourly wage. And he nearly lost his pension when the company was bought out. His union failed to really step up to bat and do what needed to be done as a union to secure their jobs. In a lot of ways, he lost everything um, for all the history, the work history uh, that he had. And I now know what he made. As a kid, I didn't. I didn't know what he made um, hourly, yearly, however you want to figure it out. I now know. And really what it meant to me knowing that is it put him that much higher up in my category of respect because he wasn't making the most money in the world. We weren't rich. I did know that much, but I didn't realize for as hard as he worked, how little he really got from it, but he knew he was good at it and he knew that he had to have a job and he knew that he had a family to take care of. And so every day he got up, he went to work. Some days it was first shift some days it was second shift some days it was third shift back in the heyday some days like he would come home at 3 a.m he'd go to sleep he'd wake up at 7 30 just in time to get me up to fix me breakfast to take me to school and then he would go back home and go back to sleep and he did that for years that was almost my elementary year childhood just set right there I never saw him after school I never saw him at night because of that because he was always working he'd go in at 3 a.m and then he'd get off at like 1 or 2 a.m or he'd go in at 3 p.m., yeah, get off at 1, 2 a.m. and come home. Repeat the cycle. Sometimes he worked five days a week, sometimes it was six, a few times it was seven. But he always worked. He rarely took sick days. He wasn't foolish. He just knew that was his job. He knew that he had to provide. He was a very good example for me to be able to say, you know what, you may not have the most glamorous job, but your job isn't your life. That's not what you're working for. You're working for your family because you're to take care of them. I can tell you right now between Darko and myself, I do not make the most money between the two of us. That doesn't mean that I have a write-off to not work hard and not to set a good example because I have no choice. I've been given this example in my life of what it looks like to be a man's man and to work hard and to play hard and have fun with people around you. And so now that kind of responsibility, one, it falls on me because someday, I know it's going to come as a shocker, someday I'm going to be a father, which is terrifying for all of us, but it is a reality. <laughs> someday. I have to be that kind of example for my kids because like it is, genetic, genetic says, we're probably going to have boys. And if we do, I have to set that tone of saying, this is your expectation to grow as boys and become men because that's what you do because that's what I did that's because that's what that's what Jim did that's because that's what we do to take care of the people around us it's not about politics it's not about voting it's not about rights it's it's it has honestly it has very little to do with constitutional format and foundations it's about being a guy it's about taking care of other people and you're ready for this it's about being humble because it's not about you. Um, you know, frequently in church, we'll have these discussions, especially married couples. Um, we'll talk about, you know, wives, submit to your husbands. How many times have we heard that, right? I, <laughs> Darko and I, we've had our moments of even, of even saying that. What's really cool, though, is in that passage, if you, if you read it in its entirety, not just by verse, <laughs> weird, you'll find out, like, it says, you know, wives, submit to your husbands. But at the same time, husbands love your wife like Christ loved the church. How do we know how much he loved the church? He died for it. So in essence, that's saying, okay, ladies, take care of your guy. He loves you. 
You want to know how much he loves you? He'll lay down his life this moment for you. Now you tell me, men, how many of us are willing to do that right now? Go ahead. I, I can't see your hands. <laughs> That'd be really weird if I could. How many of us could say that we could drop it in a, on a heartbeat saying, nothing else matters as long as I'm taking care of her because that's what I'm supposed to do. Because if all of you raise your hands and currently that's not a priority, you're a liar. <laughs> and don't worry, that's not just directed towards, oh, I'm just going to sit back, <clears throat> pop a cold one, and play a little COD. It also goes for the workaholics. There's a big difference between being a man and being a businessman. A businessman is clouded by zeros and ones. They're obsessed with, with, with the bottom dollar. They're looking for splits. They're looking for growth. They're looking for hedge funds. They're, they're, they're looking for power and to raise up through the ladder, climb through the corporate escapades, and be the number one man, person, whatever in this political correct world. That's not being a man. A man goes to work realizing his work is not his life. I, As much as I love teaching, and everybody who's been around me, I hope by this point, knows I love teaching. It's actually a lot of fun, especially middle school kids. They smell funny, but they're a riot. Only some of them smell funny. I still love them. Hey, be a man. Don't meow. But even though I love my job, I know that at 3.30... In most cases, when 3.30 hits, my job's done for the day. I go home and I take care of my family because that's what I'm supposed to do because my life isn't my work. My work is merely a supplement to my life so that I can give it to other people. Does it all make sense? In my head, it makes complete sense. And it's all easy for me to, to analyze. And Honestly, after failing so much at being a man's man, read filing the papers. You'll find the failures. They're in there. They were written when it happened. A lot of them, not just the big ones. I still know that's my obligation. That's my responsibility to grow up. I still play my video games. Actually, I don't really anymore. But I do watch my cartoons. I love my cartoons. I love my Japanese anime. But there's a time and a place, and it's not all day, and it's not all night, it's not on every electronic device that I have. There's a time and a place. The majority of those cartoons, actually, I get to actually watch with my wife because she likes them also, which is really, really cool because I got like a nerd wife, and that's awesome. <laughs> it was a compliment. Just trust me on that. But when I'm not doing that, I tell myself I take care of her. And I be Christ-like. So, I mean, I'm a Christian, so I've got some responsibilities there. As a Christian, I be Christ-like by how I treat her and how I take care of her. And that means being a man. Not a cat. That's just some thoughts. It's been, a, been about a week since I've seen my wife. I've talked to her every now and then. So just some of the thoughts that kind of go through your head. Um, that class was actually really, really good for me. Uh, because it's going to give me an opportunity to really, you know, aim some of that towards my kids in class two. Because I might be the only male role model uh, that they get for that year. Uh, and that's a lot of responsibility. And I like that responsibility, but it's kind of nerve-wracking. So that's just something to think about. If you're a man, man up. If you know a man that's not, kick him. All right? I'm from filingthepapers.com. Thanks for hearing me out. Take it easy, guys.